and around the world from, uh, by uh, going to 17.7 billion tons of oil equivalent by 2030 and reaching 23 billion tons by 2050. If we look at the composition of the energy sources, uh, the left-hand scale uh, indicates the energy demand for uh, the various sources, coal, oil, gas, these dominate the picture of coal, oil, gas. And not surprisingly, the result is a massive increase in global CO2 emissions measured on the right-hand scale in gigatons of carbon dioxide, almost doubling uh, between 2000, more than doubling between 2005 by 2050. Now, uh, if we look at the IPCC fourth assessment report that assessed the mitigation requirements for stabilizing the climate system at a level that is not yet a dangerous human uh, anthropogenic interference with the climate system, uh, they say that in order to keep the global mean temperature increase below about 2.4 uh, degrees Celsius, CO2 emissions would need to peak by 2015, and by 2050, uh, the global CO2 emissions would be uh, would need to be 50 to 85 percent below the 2000 levels. Now there is a sharp contrast between the IEA scenarios projecting a 130 percent uh, increase and the IPCC requirements for climate stabilization uh, requiring a 50 to 80 percent reduction. Now, is this whole idea feasible? The IPCC fourth assessment report also estimated the costs and potentials of different types of low carbon electricity sources. This is a summary of, what, of the IPCC findings. Um, in this case, the low carbon technologies displace the fossil fuel in the original baseline uh, scenario. And uh, the largest potential measured on the horizontal scale in uh, gigaton CO2 equivalent at the lowest cost measured on the vertical scale in uh, US dollars per ton of CO2 equivalent is, uh, seems to be nuclear power. Almost one gigaton could be reduced relative to the baseline uh, at a negative cost um, because displacing some fossil fuel sources by nuclear would also eliminate regional air pollutants causing uh, other damages and uh, those um, eliminated damages would come to a balance of negative costs. Um, another almost one uh, gigaton could come at a reasonably low level of 20, 25 dollars per ton. The same uh, numbers for hydro and wind sources, they all have uh, significant potentials in various cost categories, and they are also important contributors to mitigating global warming. So the reason is um, that um, in the case of nuclear, there are almost no greenhouse gas emissions during operation. There are some emissions uh, during the construction, in the fuel cycle operations, and in the decommissioning. In total, the life cycle emissions are uh, pretty low, and this uh, chart summarizes a major review uh, conducted by Daniel Weiser uh, two years ago, and it shows that nuclear, together with hydro and wind, are among the lowest uh, in the carbon intensity sources of electricity measured in grams per CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. Uh, notice the one order of magnitude difference between the left and the right hand chart. Uh, coal uh, fired power plants, even with carbon capture and storage, would come almost one order of magnitude, i.e., 8 to 10 times more. Uh, carbon emissions than uh, these truly low carbon sources. Um, in the past, um, hydro, nuclear, and other renewables have already massively contributed ooh, um, to the 
um, global uh, CO2 avoidance. This is the actual uh, power, emission, uh, power sector emissions, and uh, this is what would have been without hydro and without nuclear and uh, without the other renewable sources. This is almost 50% uh, more if those technologies had not been uh, contributed. I skip this one. Uh, there are also concerns related to nuclear energy. Um, in terms of safety, there is a good track record. Um, over 13,000 uh, reactor years, and there is increasing uh, reliance on passive safety solutions to further increase the operation safety. Waste uh, remains a big uh, this, uh, debate. Um, the ultimate solution will be geological disposal. Proliferation is also a real risk, and there are many efforts on the way to prevent proliferation, both political, institutional levels, and also technological solutions. Economics have been improving, both in absolute terms and also relative to other sources. And uh, due to the uh, improvements over the last two decades in all these fields, uh, for um, concerns, public acceptance uh, has been improving in many countries. So the num um, uh, my second major point is that nuclear is a low carbon energy source. It is a serious option in greenhouse gas mitigation. It has some ancillary benefits, and currently those benefits are not visible again to private investors uh, <coughs> because the Global and regional externalities of uh, fossil fuels are not included in the energy electricity prices. Nevertheless, there are some legitimate concerns about nuclear energy. They are easing, but not fully solved yet. Now, um, the next part uh, was supposed to give uh, just a few charts about the uh, factors that would be important to consider in the future of the power sector of the Southeast European regions. I will not get very far, but I would like to flash a few charts. Uh, for comparison, I added Germany um, uh, as, as a more developed ODU country, and uh, the Baltic countries, the three Baltic countries that face similar energy and environmental challenges as um, those in uh, Southeast Europe. In terms of GDP, Greece can be really proud because in this 10-year uh, uh, period, 1997-2006, the gap to Germany in terms of per capita GDP has been really uh, decreased, decreasing, but there are many other countries in the region that will need a lot more uh, development to catch up with uh, Western Europe. Uh, in uh, looking at the electricity intensity of the GDP, uh, large potentials for efficiency improvements can be observed. The total energy self-sufficiency, we get a very diverse picture. Uh, Greece, with uh, barely about 30%, has uh, the lowest uh, total energy self-sufficiency. Uh, for electricity self-sufficiency, um, again, uh, different countries have different um, uh, features, Bosnia-Herzegovina has about 120%, uh, whereas uh, uh, Firom and Croatia uh, can satisfy only about 70% of their electricity sources, uh, from domest uh, electricity demand from domestic sources. Now, the generation capacities in the region are dominated by coal uh, by thermal sources and uh, except for and, and hydro in many countries except for Albania where it's the other way around. Um, the elect accordingly the electricity generated uh, fossil sources uh, dominate um, coal, gas and, and oil. Not surprisingly the result is pretty high CO2 emissions per kilowatt electricity. These are not exactly the Chinese levels above one kilogram of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity, but pretty much on the same order of magnitude as India, for example. 